Did you almost question your decision to leave? No. After something no. like that? Oh. No. No, you're just no. like, we're out of here? I already Later? had made my decision, and uh, and that was what, that's what I was going to do, and that's what I did. So. Welcome to Cue the Mic, episode 39. And nice to be here. I'm broadcasting somewhat live from down in the tundra, not as bad as Emma is up in Iowa, but from out here on Twyford Road. Yeah, it's cold out here. I think it's, uh, I'm at my grandma's, which is in a, the Atomo area, and it's negative 17 degrees this morning. Well, it's a little warmer down here. It's negative 11, so. Uh, yeah, I think it's that way everywhere. Time. So, yeah, the time of year. Yeah, um, it's January. Yeah, so yeah, that's fair. No, Darren with us today. He decided he was too good for the podcast this week. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. yeah, so you just get me and Randy. So, but you know, we've been uh, carrying his uh, ass anyway, so uh, we'll be able to. Carry that's a good it. point. Yeah, so it's not nothing's going to be any different, really. So, yeah, that's a good point. Excuse me, just <clears throat> oh, a second. Excuse me, <laughs> sweet Jesus. Oh my goodness, no kidding. Um, so yeah, so this week we that. thought we'd kind of, without Darren here to you know, talk about himself, we thought we'd talk about Randy. Switch it up Isn't a little there bit. There's a lot to a lot to talk about there. Yeah. Well, there's some. That way our listeners can kind of get to know you that don't really, and I mean, I don't know much about you. I feel like I learned something new, so yeah, I thought it'd be fun. But um, yeah. I definitely thought we should start with your pop-up and where we're at with that. Where are you at on yeah. your stress meter Well, on a stress meter um, surprisingly, it's uh, not as bad as I thought it would be uh, at this point. We're mm -hmm. about two weeks out, the 27th of January nine to six or six to nine uh there at the twisted tree uh event center um you know we're about two weeks out i th thought we would be a little bad off by now but i think a lot of it is and unlike me i'm kind of got things a lot of things in planning you know uh my organizational skills on that on this project are a little better than what i thought honestly uh We've oh, got all the got the meat and stuff all lined up and things. And uh, my social media guys have got uh, we shot videos this last week, and uh, those videos, matter of fact, have already hit the uh, hit the internet. Uh, if you go out to twyfordbbq.com, uh, you can place your orders for that. But if you go out to our Facebook page and our Instagram page, we've got the videos announcing everything, so people can see. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> excuse me going to hell today and uh, <laughs> people people can see uh what we're doing in that an introduction to the we're actually videotaped there at the uh the winery or the event center so people can see the interior of that and we've done as the week progresses we're going to show some of the food that we're going to be doing and things like that so um uh, I've been doing here the last couple of days press releases to local media and things like that. So we're getting that going. And uh, so things are moving right along. I mean, I'm sure as the uh, I've got all my uh, uh, staffing pretty well set up and uh, they're scheduled up. Got the fabulous uh, Lawless girls coming in to help. And that's going to be my backbone. And then Kali, one of my guys, standby guys is going to help. So. Man, it's gonna yeah, be you really uh, got it all figured out. Well, let's not go that far, Emma, because that's when it'll kick so you in the ass. You know? At this point, you seem like you got a pretty good handle on it. Yeah, I but, I've got a pretty good handle on it. Uh, but you never know what'll happen at the last minute. So, and that's what I'm trying to keep from is from the train derailing a little bit. I'm trying to keep the train on yeah. the track as much as I can as we get closer and closer so that makes sense that makes sense um registration is it open yet yes registration so is open people can go get out tickets and 
one of the one of the things that came up just uh, a couple days ago um mm -hmm. you don't have to register you, you can go online and buy your ticket but mm -hmm. when you buy your ticket that doesn't how do i want to say this it doesn't you don't have to buy a ticket to get in that ticket you buy is your meal if that makes okay. sense you you're paying so like a ticket you're saying it's it's a meal ticket essentially yeah, it's a meal ticket yeah it's a meal ticket yeah. Somebody thought that yeah. that was the that was the cost to get in the door, and then you had to buy your meal ticket. You had to buy, pay for your meal. No. no, the the price you pay to get in it, that price you pay for that meal ticket is your your admittance in, and we're going to mm -hmm. have music and things like that, and then you're going to also that gets you in the door and gets you your meal, the whole ten yards. So it's one in That's one in cool. one in together so one and done want to make sure one and together so want to make sure everybody's sh sure that they they're not going to have to come in and buy a ticket to get in and then buy another pay for their meal no that ticket gets you all gets you all in so it's a pretty good little deal you got yeah i mean they come and we'll, in and do what oh, i was just going to say we'll link i'll link the registration Okay. In the bot okay. in the descriptions of this episode, we'll start doing that. So, if listeners want to go, they can. Yeah, uh, they can. It'll be you're going to link it too, and then otherwise they can just go to twyford yep. bbq dot com, and we've got a banner up there where people can click on it, link, and it'll take it to our uh, square page and stuff. So, right on. So, right on. We'll be ready to go. We've had a few people already register up, so that's exciting. So. Even two weeks yeah. out, we've got some people signing up, so that's pretty exciting. And that uh, is exciting. Yeah. So well, I'm we'll excited to. to I'm excited for it. I think it'll be a cool little thing you're doing. Yeah, I just hope. Good for the business. <laughs> I just hope we don't have this nasty ass weather like we're having today. So it'd be nice to have. Oh God, I hope be up not in too. the 40s. So we do have a snow day plan, and if somebody does pay for their meal. And they don't, you mm -hmm. know, if it's weather like this, I, I don't expect somebody to show up. I mean, if they've already right. paid, we'll give them their money back or they can come another day, you know, on our snow yeah. day, which is the next weekend. So, Okay. That's good to know. How much snow do you guys have? Do you have much over there at, Head, at the world headquarters? We don't have any. Uh, We have, I think we have like 14 or 15 inches. Do you really? Yeah, I Des Moines saw... got 21 in like four days. Holy shit. Yeah. I, uh, I saw uh, a lot. just north of here up in Minden, somebody posted some pictures, mm -hmm. which is just kind of northwest of us. And I don't know whether they mm -hmm. were old pictures or whatever, but it looked like they had had quite a bit of snow. So uh, my lovely wife had told me that uh, we were just kind of on the southern edge of this whole snowstorm yeah. type deal. And uh Got Consider lucky, yourself but lucky. Yeah, I mean, we just got the cold weather, yeah. which that's been a pain in enough in the ass. But uh, yeah, put a heavy coat on. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. Um, yeah, I decided to get snowed in with my grandma down here in the Atomo area, and I didn't think—I don't know why—I didn't think it'd be quite as extreme. I don't know why I didn't listen to the newscasters or the weather reporters. Right. Um, because they definitely said like it'll be a couple of days. I think we're on day four. But I've Are been you, here. Can you get I out? I thought about going home today. Uh I probably could if I had a really good car. All right. Yeah. My car's a little questionable, so Okay. We might try today and see what happens. But um as of right now, I'm hanging out with my grandma for a couple more days and I bet she's thrilled. Well you gotta get back but, to uh Des Moines so you can caucus. You can do the caucusing stuff. Oh, that's stuff. true. That's true. Got to vote and all that. Yeah. But, yeah, we'll see. We'll okay. see. It looks like the, we got a lot of ice, so. Ooh, that's not. And good. I don't drive in the, I don't drive in the, I don't drive in the snow. I don't drive in the ice. I don't drive. I've had more accidents in snow than I have not. So. Not a I good try to track avoid record. It at all costs. Not a good track record. No. No. I think no, I'm that's... like, oh, and. I think I've totaled two cars in a snowstorm. So holy shit, Emma! It's not great. Not proud of it. 
Well, no, I, it's nothing to be proud of, but you just got to be careful. Right. Just got to be just, careful. You know? Yeah. We drive slow now. We've learned yeah. our lesson. Instead of going, my parents also said they won't buy my next car. Well, that yeah. kind of brings it so, around, doesn't it? Yeah. So you've mm-hmm. totaled two cars, or you've just been uh, in two wrecks? He, I've totaled one car. The second car probably could have been classified as totaled. I didn't have a front bumper or a back bumper because I spun out and I hit a median twice. <laughs> um, but it was still, I could still use it. So I did for a while. And then my brother right. drove that car for until it blew up four years later. Without so. a front bumper and a rear bumper? Yeah, well, we kind of have pieces that we zip tied. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I can relate was... to some of those vehicles like that. So, Yeah, it had character. There is you what go. we like to there say. Mm-hmm. So. But yeah. No, I totaled the first car, though, pretty, pretty good. So, well, it'll warm up. It'll warm up. Yeah, hopefully. But yeah, anyway. So, Randy. Yes. Do you like to talk about yourself as much as Darren likes to talk about himself? Not really. I'm pretty, I'm pretty meek, you know. If you, well, if you believe gonna... that shit, nah, and you don't, I do a little bit. No, you don't. But I thought, yeah, I thought today, thought today we'd pretend you're like Darren and you get to talk about yourself, um, uh, a little bit. Uh, I think okay. a good start. I think a good start is just how did you get into barbecue? You know, I feel like you've had a little bit of your origin story, but not much. Okay, well, we can kind of start out in the very beginning. Um, we started out with uh, doing barbecue contests. I started kind of, we started out kind of doing barbecue at home. Uh, mm-hmm. My mom worked uh, at the Illinois School for the Deaf. And so I was living mm-hmm. at home. And so I was doing most of the cooking. And I cooked out on the grill in the garage. And so that mm-hmm. kind of got me into the whole cooking and stuff, grilling and things like that. And uh, so that what, that just kind of led into Marla and I. Then she came into the picture, and we started doing more grilling and stuff. So it was like start. That's when kind of the whole barbecue contest thing started up. So it was like we stumbled across this class over in Effingham, Illinois, which wasn't too far from here in World Headquarters. And uh, mm-hmm. Ray Lampy put on Doctor Barbecue. And so we went to it, and that's where we met Darren and Sherry, and we met some other people that we've been lifelong friends with for now. And uh, mm-hmm. so we went there and kind of got the start of it, and that was kind of how we got started, doing barbecue contests. And uh, so we started doing barbecue contests at that, and uh, we were doing – one year we did, uh, I think it was 28 contests, and most of those are done during the summer. Right. And and at the same time I was working a for a Yeah. And at the same time I was working for a paint company and covering the mm-hmm. western from Ohio West. So typical week would I would leave on uh Monday mornings, fly out on Monday mornings, mm-hmm. fly back home on Thursdays, and then leave and do a barbecue contest that weekend and then repeat again, repeat again, repeat again. Well, man. So that didn't work out too well for the bar, for the paint company. They didn't like me doing that, so I got let go. And that was also mm-hmm. in 08, the economy was going taking a hit in the tank and so mm-hmm. it's kind of like what am I going to do now? Well, there was a guy up in Iowa that I doing was doing barbecue contests spending every weekend with, you know, not to mention names, Darren. And, uh, you know, so it's kind of like, what the hell? And he had already started up a barbecue restaurant and stuff up in Des Moines. And uh, Mm -hmm. it's kind of like, what are we going to do now? And I had already interviewed for a couple more companies. And I was going to end up just starting over doing the same thing, you know. And he goes, why don't Mm -hmm. you open up a catering business? And I'm like, well, hell, I don't know anything about that much about catering. I know about barbecue because I've been doing it for the last, you know, four or five years. He goes, I'll help you. Mm-hmm. So that uh, the January 1st of 09, it was official. We opened up Twyford Barbecue and Catering LLC and 
we took off. So at that point, That's we good. were taken and uh, we knew we had to come up with some sort of kitchen uh, that could be mm -hmm. inspected, you know, and all that. Because before that, we had been kind of on the side working out of the house, the garage. And we had a yeah. trailer that really wasn't that license. It was licensed and everything by the health department, but it didn't work as good as we'd like. So mm -hmm. we uh, we bought a trailer down in Georgia that was all set up to do catering in and stuff. And so we bought that, and uh, it was about this time that, that year, because we, we were at the National Barbecue Association, us and Darren and Sherry, and it was delivered mm -hmm. here at home. And uh, so we were we were working out of that to begin with. Yep. And so, so you had a, so you started with a trailer, like a food yeah, trailer. We, yeah, we started with a food trailer, but in the meantime, we were we were kind of like, let's see how this works, because mm -hmm. let's see how the if this is going to work for us or not. And then we had another barbecue pit, and everybody's heard us talk about the ELDXs, the old Hickory ELDX yeah. pits that's on a trailer. We had one of them also, so that was sitting outside, mm -hmm. and then we had the the trailer, and it had. You know, the refrigerators, the freezers, the sinks, uh, the prep areas, all the processing areas inside and stuff and that. So we had that. And uh, it was kind of like, you know, if this didn't work, we could just sell the trailer. Well, mm -hmm. it worked. And things right. started growing and growing and growing. And it got to the point where, you know, my back was going out of was killing me because I was hauling stuff inside and out that trailer Yeah. because it was a pretty tall trailer inside now the steps. And it's like, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta get stuff on one floor. So right. we built, we built a shed and it's just right next to our mm -hmm. house. And so we built that and we put in a, a walk-in freezer, a walk-in cooler. Uh, we've got a whole concept, regular commissary that's got ovens and warmers and uh three compartment sinks and all that in there and hand washing facilities and at that point we pulled uh we pulled the uh trailer in there and was using the mm -hmm. trailer for storage and then we brought right. the barbecue pit in there also so we kind of had everything in one building which made it nice because mm -hmm. then you could run stuff in in carts and stuff Right. So, did we have the... No, 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 no. We didn't have the trailer in there yet. <laughs> no, we hadn't got the okay. trailer in there. So then we decided... Uh, and that was kind of before food trucks really become the thing to do. And that's right. where we started we started doing the food truck business. Um, it's like... Okay. We got, a, we got approached by a local farmer's market. And they said... Would you mm -hmm. guys be interested in bringing your food trailer in here and selling food out of it? It's like, well, I guess. I, why not? Mm -hmm. And yeah. that turned out really well. And so, but it was a real heavy trailer. I mean, our truck would just barely pull it. We, I think we did take it to Springfield a couple times. And uh, mm -hmm. so the food trailer turned out to be very successful. And that's what. Our idea is we kind of with my uh, consultant that I had, your old boss. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's kind of like why try to bring the the customers to me? Let's go to the customers. Oh right, with okay. the food truck, with the food truck, and that's always kind right. of been our our somewhat of our business plan. So yeah. So what year we what year did you start the food truck? Well, really it was in 09 when we first we Oh, so uh, you just we started did it the whole... kind of at the same at the same time, you know, cuz okay. we had the trailer yeah. and uh and it was a real pain in the ass because we would have right. everything set up to doing caterings and then we'd have to hook up to the trailer and drag it in town because you'd have to get everything mm -hmm. situated around and then bring it back home and get everything set back up and stuff. So. Right. Okay. So we're still in 09. So when, so you did the trailer for a little bit and then you get the food truck. 
Um, do you think when you got the, did that act was, I don't know how I want to word this question. So the, did the food truck kind of, did that, did that kind of kick off like immediately? Were you getting a lot of people that wanted the food truck or was that also kind of, was that a slower start? I guess is my question. No, 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 no. That, that, it, it, to me, the food truck and the catering went hand in hand because okay. people that was getting our food out for people to try. And th- mm-hmm. there were so many times people would call us up for because we at the same time we were doing catering and people would call right. us up and they'd say, we'd like for you to cater. And I always would ask people, well, where did you get our name? You know, and stuff like that. And they go, well, yeah. we came by the food truck and tried your food and we just loved it. So we'd like for you to cater our wedding or whatever. And and to this day, we still get a lot of that. Uh, I think our right. our best selling our best selling Ooh. piece is is the food truck. And yeah, uh, I think that's kind of what the food truck should be. I think that's good. I think it's a great, it's a good marketing tool, really. Yes. Yeah. At the end of and the day. So, so the food truck. So we realized we couldn't really drag that big trailer, and it was a behemoth of a mm-hmm. trailer around. So, right. uh, matter of fact, the trailer we bought, the next trailer we bought, we bought from Darren. Uh, they had a small trailer and yeah, mm-hmm. that's no shit. I'd forgot all about <laughs> that. It was like, where did we get that trailer from? And we bought it from Darren. And so, uh, surprise, 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 something he was wanting to get rid of. And so we worked that out and, uh, I'd forgot all about that of where that trailer <laughs> came from. So anyway, it was a smaller trailer, mm-hmm. but that gave us, uh, it was a bumper hitch trailer. So that gave us the flexibility of being able to, we could leave the big trailer at home, but even though that's when we moved that big trailer inside the 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 shed and we could work out a bit and have mm-hmm. storage and stuff. And, uh, but we still had the, we had built the kitchen. So we were kind of redundant and stuff. And we had it in there, and uh, so then we decided we we really needed to sell it because mm-hmm. we weren't it, we didn't really need it. So we put that on the market and sold it, and it went down to went to New Jersey, and uh, mm-hmm. then uh, then we had that trailer we had bought from Darren, and we were using that on quite a bit. And I mean, we used that a lot. We were using it going. Uh, to festivals every now and then go to festivals but uh Mm -hmm. i had the lawless girls helping me and we'd go quite a bit uh especially during the summer you know like uh we'd be here in jacksonville farmer's market and that's when that's kind of what got us started on going on wednesdays and stuff and we would go Mm -hmm. on certain locations in jacksonville and then we'd go in certain locations in springfield and stuff so Mm -hmm. So that what is worked the out. biggest event you've taken that food truck to? Uh, do, you know, do you know? The biggest event, I would say, yeah. the biggest one of the biggest events we did was, and it wasn't that food truck. It was another food, mm-hmm. but not that food trailer. It was another food trailer because okay. we sold, we had that one, and then. I bought a trailer out of Kansas City, had one built for me, and mm-hmm. uh, I really liked that one. And then I bought a food truck out of California, a regular driving food truck out of California. Yeah. And uh, then I bought this truck I've got now and sold those two trailer, the trailer and the truck, and uh, mm-hmm. and got those. But probably one of the biggest ones two biggest ones I that I think of is we did an event down in Alton and mm-hmm. uh I it was a food truck rally that they had down at by the casino mm. and stuff and uh yeah. mm-hmm. I I would we had lines forever oh yeah I mean all all the, yeah, all the food sh- and they had a big band uh, yeah. big name band there and stuff mm-hmm. and uh i i've got some pictures and i every now and then i'll stumble across them and it's just lines forever and the only thing that saved us i mean all the other food mm-hmm. trucks run out of food what saved us right. we have a, a truck we call a hot shot truck that's got an oven in it uh-huh. and then a cooler section mm-hmm. in it 
we loaded, we had the idea that we were going to be really busy down there at this thing because it was well promoted in the St. Louis market and everything. It was like in the yeah. fall. So a lot of people were traveling, you know, going. Right. That Alton area is a big uh, uh, tourist area. We, uh, uh-huh. so we loaded that truck up, took the chance and loaded that truck up. We didn't run out of food. Uh-huh. We were one of the last, there was only like two trucks left with food. I hate to think how much we sold. The other thing was a lot. Oh yeah, we sold tons. I mean, we tons. had lines. Yeah, we had we had lines going on well, it's, forever. It's, if it's a f- yeah food truck rally, it's just a festival for foodies. So like yeah, yeah. I can only and imagine. Were, and we and we were something new. We weren't one of the regular food trucks right. that come to the normal rallies. So you know, and we yeah. were the only barbecue place there. So uh, it was it was pretty neat. It was pretty neat. Yeah. The other time we did a uh, uh, a big a big event was uh, when we got ready to go to Puerto Rico the first time. We announced, mm-hmm. you know, we were going, and we were up in Springfield by St. John's at Second and Carpenter, and uh, we started at eleven o'clock, and we ran out of food at two thirty quarter to three. We had lines. We probably in that time period we probably had. 250, 300 people in line the whole time. Yeah. Of people coming up and getting food before we left. So did you, when you came back from Puerto Rico, did you do like a we're back kind of thing? Yeah. yeah. I feel like that would have been, yeah. Did, and that was, was it? That was, yeah, that was good too. Six, that was six, very successful yeah, too. That so. makes sense. That makes and sense. I hate to, I, I can't remember the dollar amount that we did when we, when we left. But I right. kind of, it, I kind of remember in the back of my head, and it was like, we've never done that amount ever there. At did it almost? Car. Did you almost question your decision to leave? No. After something no. like that? Oh no! No, you're just no. like we're out of here. I already later. had made my decision, and uh, and that was what that's what I was going to do, and that's what I did. So. What can I just ask? Like, what inspired Puerto Rico? Like, that's just kind of a random venture. Well, no, it wasn't a, a random. Uh, it wasn't a random one. It was uh, an opportunity. Okay. I saw it as an opportunity. Uh, I had been down there a couple mm-hmm. times, and uh, I'd been down there once, and kind of saw the opportunity that there wasn't a barbecue place down. Anybody doing American barbecue mm-hmm. in that Isabella Aguadilla northwest corner of the mar- of yeah. the island. And then this restaurant came open that had been doing it, but it closed and been closed down for about a year, year Mm -hmm. and a half and saw that as an opportunity. But before we even got into that, uh, I'd spent probably two months, two and a half months kind of researching, you know, okay, what can happen here? What can, where do we get this? Where do we get that? You know, Mm -hmm. where do we get things from? And then also, going to different places in the on the island are we better off going here are we better off going there and yeah. talking to some friends of mine that had barbecue places down there that you know mm-hmm. and everybody kept pushing us that way to that northwest corner to that Isabella area mm-hmm. so it wasn't something that we huh. just jumped into like last right. minute go oh let's you what the fuck through. let's do it we yeah. we did a lot thought of studying on it and thought through it and stuff so that's good. That's good. Did you surf while you were down there? Yes. Yes. That was one of the things As I wanted to do. And, and I got some surfing in. So, which that was my the biggest rush that. I think I've ever had in my life is when, once I got up on the surfboard and stuff, you know. Yeah. Uh, I've only done it a handful of times, but I can't say I've really ever been up on a surfboard. I have attempted to get up on a surfboard, but I, uh, I, it's, I, I took lessons. It's hard. Yeah, it's especially oh, yeah. for an old fuck like me, you know. Yeah. I mean, well, I, I was, I learned when I was a multi-sport athlete, and I still could not do that. You have to have some flexibility to yourself to get up. And, yeah. Uh, there's a uh, some good friends yeah. of ours down there, and they've got a mm-hmm. son that he is, I think he's five now, but he started surfing. Mm-hmm. I mean, literally on his own, oh, getting yeah. up. When he's three, you know that's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. And and they've got a, a 
baby that's not even a year old and they've already got got him out on a surfboard you know and so i yeah those kids will be what well uh, ohanu oh, ohanu i mean he's mm -hmm. he's out there they go they'll go twice a week twice a week three times a week of a morning you know and that's that's kind mm -hmm. of they you know you take the kids to the playground they just go down the street they, to the beach yeah. And, and they'll go surfing right. and stuff till about about ten o'clock, and then they go home. You know, and that's what they do. So yeah, this weather really makes me wish I was down there. Yeah, me too. Instead, because this is my first yeah. winter back for a while, so it's kind of getting used. Really? I had to get some. Yeah, because I had to get my winter coats out, and there was a uh, matter of fact, I had to stop wa laundering them this morning for this because. There mm -hmm. was some uh, mud dauber nests still in the sleeves and stuff of them because I had them out on the back in mm -hmm. the garage and there's shit in them and stuff. So I kind of forgot. Oh, about good them. Lord. So anyway, you that, don't need them. so yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so anyway, the food truck, uh, those were mm -hmm. some of the biggest crowds we ever had. And, uh, and then, and then mm -hmm. we've done, had some pretty big crowds at Illinois college. We, we do a lot of stuff here at yeah. Illinois college and, uh, We've had some big crowds there where Illinois College has paid for the kids to do have stuff, and uh, we've had lines for two hours and just just constant, just boom, 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 and and that's good too. Yeah. So college kids make sense. So I feel like that's always yeah. a good market because they want something different, but they're not going to cook. Exactly, yeah. and 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 they, they get and the little, college yeah, and the college ties it into some type of an event you know like event. you know yeah st st we it, it we were going to do something when the kids were coming back but you know look out the window and look yeah. at the thermometer you know type deal so once weather yeah. gets nice again we'll be we'll be doing some stuff for them so and we are the official food truck of illinois college uh and the official caterer of That's illinois cool. college so yeah because uh we've done we do a lot of things with illinois college and uh, that's where I get all my employees from is Illinois College, the football team. So, uh, right. have for the last four or five years. So, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, the food truck, when, I mean, yeah. the food truck yeah. complements the catering, just they go hand in hand, hand in hand. Yeah. Well, yeah, that makes sense. So, um, I feel like when you guys did a little pop up episode, you kind of probably discussed it a little bit. But the pop up is that is this a test? Do you want to open a restaurant? I mean, I know no. Darren tells no. you don't, but no, no, no. So no. what is the goal with the pop up? Just to see, just, just to give them something it. different, or just to just try? To try we've, it? Had a, we've had a lot of people ask, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, Mike Hayes, the guy that owns the Twisted Tree uh, Event Center, mm -hmm. him and I were talking and he goes, you know, he says, you you might be surprised with the number of people that are going to because in the past, the only time people could get our food is one, catered, or two, mm -hmm. get it in a box and take it home and uh, or eat it in their right. car. So this is an opportunity mm -hmm. for them to sit down in a restaurant situation and that. And, uh, and if this is successful, I would... You know, I'd I'd like to do it if it's successful for us and for the Twisted Tree. I could see us doing these once a month, maybe twice a month. Mm -hmm. You know, more regular. But I I'd, I'd always wanted to do one of these to just to see how yeah. how it would how it would work. Right. And and oh, yeah. so so this is kind of our chance. You know. I think that's yeah. I think that's something Darren should do with the ghost kitchens, but. I don't know if he ever would. And because, you know, we're, I mean, you we're lucky enough. Him. We're lucky enough to have this in here in Jacksonville, the Twisted yeah. Tree. You know, and I've got a uh, relationship built up with Mike. Anyway, uh, what I would really yeah. like to do is to have one up in Springfield. And I've got a guy looking yeah. for me a place up in Springfield, and maybe with us doing this one over here, um, some place might come up over in Springfield right, help that build we can some traction. We could, yeah, that we could do one over in Springfield. You know, somebody might have a location that they would mm -hmm. be interested. Because I mean, he's going to get all the bar business, so that's a good right. money maker for him. You know, so 
Right. So, like, one is there like a local brewery or something in Springfield that you could probably? Because I feel like those would be. Yeah, the micro brews is what really works good yeah. in some towns. There's a lot of towns that have micro brews, and they just have mm-hmm. the food trucks set up outside. And uh, right, is there any of those up? I mean, in it is a little hard. That? Oh yeah, well, even our food truck would go to some breweries. Well, Darren's food truck, Smoky D's food truck would go to some breweries. The only problem is that sometimes it's really hard to have barbecue and beer because they're both really heavy. You know, so. Darren always wanted the food truck to do more like shareable items, like, you know, nachos or stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Just yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I see what you're saying. It's a little lighter. Right. But, right. But the, I feel like event space wise, breweries are pretty popular, especially with like my generation. It's just a place we go to hang out. So. Sure. Um, yeah. Interesting. So, yeah. so we'll see how, we'll see how it comes out. Yeah. So I, I'm real anxious. It's, like I said, it's something I've been wanting to do. And as far as opening up a restaurant, no. At this point in the game, uh, no. But you know, Dad always said sense. never say. Dad always said never say never because never is a long time. But I can pretty yeah. well tell you it's not going to happen. I mean, uh, if something would come along. Who knows? But it'd have to be a pretty good yeah. deal. So that's fair. And would you do like a full blown restaurant, or would you do kind of more of like just a set space, like pretty much of the food truck, but like in one spot, like a carry out business kind of thing? Probably or, just a carry out business type deal. Yeah, it's, it's more what that we makes do. sense. And yeah. that way, people that can sense. take it home, and then probably do. If we were to do something like that, do the carry out business type deal, and then on maybe on Friday nights do the pop up a uh, pop up type deal, you know, or a Saturday mm-hmm. night do a pop up deal included in on it, you know, since we'd have the facility yeah. and stuff. So that wouldn't I, I don't want to yeah. rule that out. So yeah. find a good place. Keep your options stuff. open. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Keep your options open. Um. So 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 how, that's kind I, of. Do you still do any? So, so Sorry. Do what? I was going to ask, do you still do like barbecue competitions anymore? Not really. You... Uh, we're pretty well out of it unless I go to something and mm-hmm. hang out with Darren. I mean. Uh, That's fair. Uh, last, Like this last fall, I went down and hung out with him at mm-hmm. the uh, Praise the Lord barbecue contest down mm-hmm. at uh, Murfreesboro. And we did the mm-hmm. pork steak contest that part of yeah. the uh the state contest and stuff and uh we did that but uh no i mean if i've gone i've just kind of hung out with him and bothered him and stuff and or if he's yeah. needed some help or something or going by himself and sherry wasn't going to be able to go there's been a time or two i went along with him so just to hang out yeah just oh, hang out cool. and yeah it's been fun so that's pretty cool um so yeah that's pretty interesting and well i mean we didn't even touch base on your master chef i feel like that's just a wild thing that you've done yeah you've that was just that literally was a wild thing uh yeah i was on the i was on the first uh season of master chef and uh, mm-hmm. a lot of people have already seen that but i've got i got brutalized yeah. uh beat the shit out of by gordon and them we did our I, what I won, what I got on there with was uh, ribs. When I originally mm-hmm. uh, did the, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, the audition, Try audition, out. the original audition, kind of audition. Yeah. I did ribs, and I cooked ribs here at home, and then took them up to Chicago, and uh, kind mm-hmm. of timed them. You know, had them so far done, and then when I got up to Chicago, they were done. Took them up in a Cambro. And then presented them up there, and they really liked them and everything. So then when I got uh, they last minute called me and wanted me to come out to California, it's like, well, I probably sh- I look in hindsight, you would have, could have, should have. I should have mm-hmm. done ribs out there, but I only had an hour to prep them, an hour to get your meal together. So how are you going to do that? Well, I could have taken and parboiled them, you know, and put them in a pressure cooker mm-hmm. and cooked ribs. But, you know, I just couldn't do that, you know, 
that's right. not that's not real barbecue cooking ribs in a right. pressure cooker and stuff so that's when i did the potato casserole and uh mm-hmm. so uh but it was interesting going out there and doing it and going through the process of all the steps going to it because I went to Chicago and did the audition thing for it. And then they mm-hmm. called me up like two days later and I had to go back to Chicago. And uh, there was a whole big table of us that had to do, mm-hmm. uh, do all the questionnaires. There was, and I imagine a lot of people getting jobs and stuff of taking these questionnaires where it's a 500 question uh, questionnaire of like, how do you feel on a good day? Do you like nice days? Do you like sunny days? how do you do you feel good on a cold day you know one of those kind of things you know psychological tests and stuff and then uh yeah then we met with met with a psychologist and they kind of went mm-hmm. through the the paperwork that i had to fill out and i still have it on my computer was a 38 page application wanting to know like uh-huh. who you roomed with in college did you have a girlfriend in yeah. college? Did you have a girlfriend in right. high school and what her name was? All that background mm-hmm. information and stuff. And they had already went through it before you before you went up there because they were asking you questions all about this and that. And then uh hmm. and then they did the background check. They wanted to know if you'd been in porno movies and stuff like that. And and hmm. if you had things like that, you know, it's like and when I went in there, this lady, the uh, the background check lady, she was really nice, and mm-hmm. she and yeah. so they they wanted me in overalls and stuff like that. So I knew what was up, and uh, <laughs> and so I went in there, and she goes, uh, so we'd talk quite a bit. And she goes, all right, mm-hmm. I got to ask you this. She goes, have you been in any porno movies, or have you got any sex tapes out there? And I said, I only wish. And she goes, oh I knew God. you would have, she goes, I knew you'd have something. And I said, what the hell's that about? Well, well, that you're was, an overall, so. Yeah, that's usually a red I, flag. Yeah. And what it was about was, she goes, that was about when they were doing uh, all the music, where people do, not America's Got Talent, but the deal where people sing and they become. Uh, American Idol. American Idol. American Idol was just yeah. kind of starting. It was in its like a second or third year. And back then uh-huh. there were some people that had got on Americans, um, American Idol and had got quite a ways along. And then it come out that there was, they had videotapes of them, you know, people, old girlfriends had surfaced, old boyfriends right. had surfaced that they had all this and they had, it just killed, killed the whole thing. And she goes, what they Everybody do. Wants- that, so then they would want money for it, and she goes, "Right, it, if we know up front that there's a video out there, then I take mm-hmm. it back to the producers and find out, do you really okay? There's this, how val- valid of a uh, person is this, and then how much are we right. willing to pay to get it pay for it to get it off the market? Right. So, and then when that I went to California, and then when I went to California, I mean. You think we piss away money. You haven't seen anything but, until you get in that. I mean, the caterers out there and all kinds of stuff. Oh, yeah. It's just, it's just amazing. So, but it was an, so did it you was meet a, Gordon Ramsay? Just, I don't even know whether I shook his hand or not. It was just kind of, it was in a dark room. But and, you were in the same room? Yeah, I was in the same room with him and the two other guys. And that was about it. And, uh, mm. Then, I mean, when you get done, they whisk you away and start interviewing you to make sure, you know, yeah. that you see the pieces afterwards. You're, yeah, and you're then, mentally stable. Well, then they take you straight into a room, another dark room. Everything's in dark rooms. And they took you into That's a room. Weird. And yeah, it is kind of weird. But you met with a psychologist. <laughs> and I mean, they start just right, right off thinking, are you all right? Do you feel? And I'm like, yeah. Yeah. I said, I said, you know, I said, my deal was I'd like to either win it or at least get some pre free publicity. And, you know, we were in the local papers and stuff about it. And uh, yeah. and so that night, there was a whole group of us that got let go. 
and there was people mm-hmm. sitting around and we were all having sitting around having beers there were several people sitting at the tables crying and i'll never forget there right. was one lady there was one lady there that she was crying that she had taken and sold her business she had a bakery business she had sold it to go out there because she was so sure she was going to win it that she sold her business and everything and she didn't know what she was going to do now that's just a bit yeah, ambitious yeah so and i, don't I was think like I could ever what do the fuck like you know that. yeah it's like yeah. what the fuck what you the know fuck? The, i yeah. was out there when a big earthquake hit and i was in a like a 30 story hotel and felt the ho- mm-hmm. felt the hotel going like this yeah. you know and i was fun. actually rooming well, rooming scary, with a guy fun. i was rooming with a guy mm-hmm. from la and uh i you know i was like what the hell's going on and he starts yelling Get in the doorway. Get in the doorway. And I'm like, what? And, he, and he, he literally grabbed me. And he goes, get in the doorway. I mean, he knew what to do. Oh, and he goes, not his first get... rodeo. No. And I go, what the fuck's going on? He goes, get in the doorway. <laughs> so if this thing starts crashing, you'll be protected. And I'm like, okay. That's, yeah. Huh. A world that we're not used to. A world we're no. not used to. I mean, I can tell you how to prepare for a blizzard. Yeah, exactly. Or a tornado. Exactly. Yeah, so earthquakes new. Yeah, but well, overall, it was a it was a good experience. It was a good experience. Would I like to yeah. went on? Yeah, but it was a good experience. So, but you did it. Yeah, you can say you did it. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So. Yeah. But now we're right. doing the catering, and we've got the food yeah. truck, and uh, kind of wait for some nice days. We've got a bunch of. I, one of the things I've been doing here in the winter time mm-hmm. last week is I've had some, had some of the uh, places calling me booking in uh, days for the summer, and it's I never thought I'd ever say it, but it's, it's, ama- it's, a, it's amazing how much uh, how many days we've already got booked into starting in March, yeah. all the way through August and September. So that was something I that's something I do remember. When I was running like the food truck socials for Smokey D's, we would start getting messages in December or January being like, can I book you for May? I'm like, I, one, I am not the one you book with. Two, I don't even think we're booking out that early, but if we are, here's I mean, email this. But, yeah, people want to people want to yeah. get it for their event on the calendar and stuff. So, so right. we're getting a lot of that. But then on you have those then- other people that that message you a week before like, hey, can I get your food truck? And it's like, no. Yeah, that thing's booked. I actually but. booked a wedding for mm-hmm. September of twenty five the other day. That's pretty yeah. good. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, got good food, so, Randy. So that kind of made me feel good that they're wanting something that far out. And oh it yeah, makes me think somebody's got their shit together. You know, they're planning that far out. So yeah. So all right. Well, I think my last question is gonna we're you gonna work with any of the influencers? Well are you gonna try I'm gonna that try. Route? I'm gonna try. Just... I mean, uh you know, we don't have as many influencers down here as you would like in Des Moines and stuff like that, but it, it amazes I don't think me. we have very many in Des Moines either. I You'd be surprised. We're not that big. But we're not like that big. I mean yeah. we definitely have some. Don't get me wrong, but it amazes me yeah. that there's people down here that have a hundred k followers, you know. Yeah. And it's kind 40... of a crazy little world that influencing. Yeah, and you know the one girl, one lady that I've talked to, uh, mm-hmm. she does influencing for restaurants, clothing, uh, makeup. Yeah. You know, I mean, she's. She does it all. All you of know. it. So, yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I hope that works out for you. Well, we'll give it a try. But, I mean, you never know unless you try. Yeah. So. That's true. That's true. Well, that's all I really have. What about well, you? That, Got anything that's else? That's about it. That's about it. So uh, this is just going to yeah. pop in the morning. So that'll be good for everybody. Yeah. So. We had to record that, that'll be late. on Martin Luther King Day. So everybody will be just sitting around. Mm-hmm. So. Well, not necessarily everybody. 
Some well, of us still have to work. Yeah. Are you going to be working? Yeah. Oh, really? I'll be working. Yeah. Okay. From your grandma. There's still schools in session. Hopefully, I don't know. I might try to venture home. Des Moines roads are worse than um, our roads are down here. So I got to call my parents. Have them let me know how it is. Get yeah. home so you can caucus we'll when you get home for tomorrow. So Now, will yeah, you go caucus maybe. or not? I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't really talk know. politics, Randy. Okay. All right. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway. All right. Well, well it's good chatting. That was so. episode 39. It was a good chat. We learned a lot about you. Well, hopefully it's all history. good. So. Hopefully all I think good. It was. So, Randy, I'm out of yeah. here. Uh, all right. Like us on, uh, or follow us on social media, guys. We're at Q the Mike Pod on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and at, or Twitter, X, whatever, and uh, threads. You can also find us on YouTube at Q the Mike Podcast. Um, if you're not watching these, you should. They're fun. Um, subscribe to us on there. Like our videos. Leave comments. Uh, I'm going to have Randy's. I'm going to get the link from Randy. We're going to have, um, the link to register for his pop-up, if that's something you guys want to do, that'll be in the descriptions um, on YouTube and on all podcast platforms. Uh, so you just have to click that link. You guys can go subscribe from there. If you haven't yet, rate our show. It's good, I think. I Give us five too. stars if you want. Yeah. And, Every uh, little bit helps. Yeah, that was episode 39. Every little bit helps. And download our episodes. It just gives us a better idea of who's listening, because we like those stats. So, yeah, I think that's all I got. So that was episode 39 of Cue the Mic. We'll see you guys next week. Adios.